Welcome to another week of Church Online Family Life Church. We welcome you to worship with us today as we lift up the name of Jesus. You know, we are this family life church at, online at home. Uh, comes with a lot of technical challenges and things that we work through to try to bring you a worship experience that is as close to live as we can get. And so, although we may not be there in the room with you, we realize there is so much that is going on in our nation, in our world today, that um, what better thing that we could do than just to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, as we sing this song today, I hope it becomes kind of the anthem of our hearts for the week, that we would elevate that name above every other name, because the name of Jesus truly is above everything else. Amen? Yes, amen. Let's sing it together.
Family Life Church family. We want to say hello to you and everybody who might be listening. If this is your first time watching us, welcome today to another week with us as we meet technology-wise and not in a physical building. Um, we are planning a gathering, a time to get together. We'll sing a few songs and just hang out with one another on July 5th at 5 p.m. We're going to be sending you more details about that and the location, but go ahead and mark your calendar for July 5th if you're in town at 5 p.m. So July 5th at 5 p.m. we'll be gathering. We'll have a great time. We'll spend some time with one another. It'll be a lot of fun. Well, last week was Father's Day, and I started in one of the points there to talk to you a little bit about something that I want to expound a little bit more about today. And actually, before I say what that was, let me just make reference again to kind of the culture and the time that we're living in. You know, there is so much noise in our world today and so many voices vying for our attention. But I believe one voice should resonate more clearly above them all. It's the voice of God's Word. It's God's Word, I believe, that will help us and it will speak directly to the need of all humanity. And that need is Jesus. I said last week to all of the fathers and, and really to all of us that for a life to 
succeed, to have a good outcome, we've got to put God first. And I know when making that statement, it just sounds like some duties and some rituals and routines we could follow and put in our lives, and then everything just kind of turns out for the best. But there's actually more to it than that. We well, see, what I want more than anything for you is for you to truly know God through His Son, Jesus, to know Him in a way that is personal. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, this is out of the message translation. It says this, Paul was speaking to the church at Corinth. He said, you'll remember, friends, that when I first came to you, I didn't try to impress you with polished speeches in the latest philosophy. I deliberately kept it plain and simple. And that's what we do at Family Life Church. That's what I try to do as a pastor, just to keep it plain and simple with all the voices and all the noise and everything that's going on in our world. There are a lot of people that want to impress with their intellect, and I'm all for education. But sometimes it just needs to be made plain and simple. And it could be no, no more plain and simple than this. First, Jesus and who He is. Then, Jesus and what He did. Jesus crucified. You see, last week when I talked about knowing God and putting Him first in your life, the way in which I want you to know God and to experience God by putting Him first is to come to a place of God revealing to Himself what He's done for you, what He's done for you through Jesus, so that you can have an intimate encounter and relationship with the Creator of the universe. See, again, as a pastor, my calling and highest priority is to point you to Jesus. Jesus as the Son of God who takes away the sin of the world, and Jesus, the living Word of God, the promise for every part of your life. I believe if your life is built on the Word of God, it will be directly influenced by your understanding of that Word. That will allow you to know who Jesus is and, and what He's accomplished for you on your behalf. It will become personal to you. And I want you to know Jesus, to truly know Jesus, to have a personal experience that radically changes who you are. So who is Jesus? It's a question that each of us must answer. Every generation has had to answer this question. Even Jesus asked this question of his disciples. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, he came to them and he said, Who do people say that I am? Verse 14, they replied, Well, some say you're John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. In other words, the, no one really knew who Jesus was. They knew he was similar to a lot of other people. He was like other people. He had influence like other people. He was respected like other people. He was talked about like other people. But Jesus was trying to get to the very core of what each of us must come to ourselves. So he says in verse 15, But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Well, here's a life principle for you. I throw this in when it went in for nothing. If you allow the opinions of others to consume you or persuade you, their opinions will be the driving force of your life. See, Jesus asked this question very personally of each of us. Who do you say that I am? Not what other people say. Because their opinions will drive your life if you let them. God wants you to have a personal revelation and an understanding of who Jesus is. So he goes on in verse 16 and says this, Simon Peter answered, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. In verse 17, Jesus replies, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Blessed, he says, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood or, or, or by some other man, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. You see, what Jesus was saying is, this revelation that God has given you, that's what my church will be built on. Now, let me give you a little context. For nearly three years, Peter and 11 other men had followed Jesus just about everywhere he went. They were witnesses to some of the most incredible things anyone had ever seen. Yet 
after all of this, people were still uncertain about who this Jesus was and who he claimed to be. So Jesus' response to Peter reveals something I want to talk to you about today. So let's look again at verse 17. When Jesus says to Peter, This was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. God revealed the true nature and person of Jesus to Peter. It's Peter's revelation. It's what's revealed to Peter, not by another man, but by God. That is what changed his life. It's what God said, I'm going to build my church on. It's a spiritual revelation that Peter received in his inner man. Some of you might say, well, what is revelation besides the last book of the Bible? Well, in the original language of the New Testament there, it literally means to take the cover off. It means to disclose. If you've ever seen a pretty simple magic trick where something's covered up and it was one thing when it was covered up and then they pull the cover off and it becomes something else and we all understand it's trick, it's deception. But it's that kind of imagery that once was, what once was covered up when it's revealed, it shows us something else. That's what God wants to do in our hearts. We, we might know about Jesus. We may have heard a lot of things about who He is. But when God takes the cover off, when God discloses it, when He reveals it to us, that's what changes us. And please hear this. Just like God had made himself known to Peter, I believe God still wants to make himself known to you today. And remember the context of what I'm coming to you with today. It's in the sea of the voices around us. It's under the, the, the massive amount of information that we have at our disposal today. There's Jesus that's a part of that. And God wants you to understand, I want you to hear that Jesus needs to be above everything else. You need to understand him and see him more clearly than all of the other information, all of the other voices, all of the other opinions in your life, because it's then and only then that you'll have a transformational moment in your life where God, as he discloses who Jesus truly is, can then completely radically transform you into all that he's called you to be. So my question for you today is the same one that Jesus asked. Who do you say that Jesus is? Who do you say Jesus is? Again, you need a personal revelation of Jesus, who he is and who he wants to be in your life. I personally believe it begins with a desire. Do you want to know who Jesus is? Are you concerned with that? Is that a priority for you? Or is Jesus just another thing in your life? I pray that it's more than just another thing, that your passion is for more than just knowledge. The knowledge is great, but the knowledge won't necessarily transform your life. Like we talked about last week, when your life confronts difficulty, when you come up against a wall, when you face a challenge or a difficulty, if Jesus is first, if his voice resonates above the rest, if God has been made the foundation of your life, that's, will keep, that's what will keep your life from collapsing. Not knowledge, but a revelation and an understanding as to who Jesus is. It says in John chapter 14, in verse 8, after Jesus had told his disciples that it would be soon leaving them, and they began to have questions for him, Philip is one of the voices that spoke up and said, Lord, show us the Father. In other words, before you leave us, we want to see God. Show us the Father and that will be enough for us. We, we know that you're leaving and we're not certain about a place that you say you're going to prepare for us and that you're coming back. But hey, but if you'll just reveal God to us, if you'll just show us God, that'll be enough. Well, Jesus answers this way. He says, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus says, don't you know me even though I've been with you all of this time? 
In other words, even though the disciples had been around Jesus for a long time, they didn't really know him. They hadn't truly known that he was the visible expression of God. You see, it's one thing to know about Jesus, but it's another thing to truly know him. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, it says, The Son is the image of the invisible God. Well, that's great for the disciples. They, they, they walked with Jesus for nearly three years. They watched him do incredible things. No doubt if you and I had been there, this question of Jesus, hey, I've been with you all this time. How could you not know? I am God. I'm the visible expression of him. If I were one of those guys that had been there, I'd have been like, oh, well, that's, that's great. Okay, now I see it. But what about you and me today? We didn't walk the earth with Jesus. We weren't there when he opened blind eyes and deaf ears, when he took the demonic oppressed child and freed him from that oppression. We weren't there when he raised Lazarus from the dead. I wasn't there the day they hung him on a cross. I wasn't there the morning after he was raised from the dead with Mary and the others as they ran to that tomb to see an empty place and grave clothes laying there as if they had never touched a human body. I wasn't there. I didn't see these things with my own eyes. So how could Jesus say, well, hey, if you've seen me, you've seen God. I've never visibly seen Jesus and neither have you. Well, let me tell you how you can see Jesus today. And this is critical, and it's important. In John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word that we're talking about, capital W, is the Word, the revelation, the inspired Word of God, the Scriptures that have been given to us, that the Holy Spirit moved upon men's heart, to write down and to speak while others inscribed those very words. That is God. In verse 14, it says, the word, this word that was inspired, this word that has been spoken and recorded, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. In other words, we see Jesus today as he spoke and he taught in scripture. We see Jesus today as he demonstrated compassion and did the miraculous in scripture. That's where we see him. That's how we see who he is and in turn see God. All of this was recorded so that we might know him. Because remember, Jesus said, listen, if you've seen me, you've seen God. Well, the word that's been inscribed and recorded for us to see what Jesus did was also given to us so that we might see who Jesus is. And in seeing who he is by seeing who he was and what he did there in Scripture, we're able to then see God. In, verse, in John chapter 20, verse 30, it says, Jesus performed many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. In other words, the totality of everything Jesus did hasn't even fully been recorded. Verse 31 goes on to say, but these are written. What has been written? These things that Jesus did, these miraculous signs and wonders, these encounters, these relational uh, things that took place with other people were recorded. These are written that you and I may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. You see, here's the point. The minute that you can see who Jesus is and God can reveal and to disclose who He is, His person, that's when by believing you have life. You come to a whole new place with God. See, God's word was recorded so that you and I could hear about Jesus and discover just how real and profoundly personal we can know Jesus. And this is what I want to know. If you will allow God's word to fill your life, it will become the strength of your life. 
Again, this is what I know. If you will allow God's word to fill your life, it will become the strength of your life. These things were all written so that when we see them and put our faith in them and, in them and believe them, they will become the strength of our lives. Just as if Jesus were physically present with you today and you had walked with him and seen him do these things. If you had walked with him and seen him express the very heart of God to humanity, that would have a profound impact on your life. It would change your life. The faith that it would give you, the hope that it would give you, would be life-altering. So we see Jesus in his word. Colossians 1 verse 17, <clears throat> it says, He, Jesus, the written word, is before all things, and in him, in Jesus, in his word, all things hold together. Listen to that again. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus is the Word. So in Jesus, in the Word, which is before all things, in Him, in His Word, all things hold together. This is what I'm trying to say to you. If you will put God's Word in your heart, put God's Word in your life, if you'll put God first as the foundation of your life, if you'll put that there, God can reveal to you who Jesus is because as you look into Scripture to see who He is, when God reveals the person of Jesus to you, when He uncovers His compassion, His love, His mercy, His kindness, His goodness to you, that will become the strength of your life and your life will hold together as a result of that. So, what do you do? Well, let me say it to you this way. In light of all that's going on in our world today, you need to turn the volume of the world down and turn the volume of God's Word up in your life. That's actually what I've called this message today. And as I begin to wrap it up, this is the one thought that I have for you. In, in the sea of voices and opinions and all of the things that we're confronted with today, and so much of it is so weighty and so heavy as we look at racial reconciliation and dynamics in our world today, the political landscape that is what it is, and, and the people vocalizing their beliefs and their heart and their thoughts. There is so much that is trying to consume your time and attention. We just need to be cautious and careful that the opinions of others, that the voices of everybody else, that they're not louder than the voice of God's Word. So you need to turn the volume of the world down and turn God's word up in your life. You see, I believe there's a battle for your attention that's taking place today. And there are many things competing for your time, some good and some not so good. I can't give you any better pastoral advice than this. In the sea of voices with all of the noise that is out there and all that's competing for your attention, Psalm 46 Verse 10 says this, be still and know that I am God. That word know there literally comes from experience. How do you get that experience? Well, as we look into the word of God, we see Jesus for all that he is. His compassion, his mercy, his kindness, his goodness. When we look into that word and we get that word in our life, it is the experience that comes with that as we apply it to our lives, that we receive the strength and the wisdom and the guidance and the direction that we need for every part of our lives. When you turn the volume of God's word up in your life, it will turn down the volume that is in the world, the distractions and the chaos and the things that would seek to dishearten us to divide us. You see, the answer that everyone is looking for, whether they've come to this place of recognition or not, it's Jesus. I'll just say it as simple as that. Just like Paul said, I didn't come to impress you with eloquence of speech or with the latest philosophy, but with the simplicity of the truth of Jesus, who He is and Him crucified. That same truth is what the world needs today. It's what you need today. You need to understand and to see so clearly for yourself 
who Jesus is and to see that he died for you and was raised from the dead for you so that you could know him and that in knowing him, the strength and the wisdom and the guidance and the direction that you would need for life would be yours. As if you had walked the earth in footstep with Jesus, that experience that you would have garnered from that relationship and that time spent with him, how it would have impacted your life. It can still happen today as you look into the word and see Jesus and all that he is and all that he does. It can touch your life in profound ways today. Psalm 46 verse 10 again says, be still and know that I am God. If God's going to reveal Jesus to you, you're going to have to give God the raw material and context to do so through Scripture. If you're going to be still and see God in your life and know God in your life, you're going to have to give Him something to work with. And that's what Scripture was given to us for. It was to give us the context and the raw material so that faith could be imparted to us, so that hope could come alive. It is from the context of this raw material of Scripture as we read it and put it in our hearts and lives that God transforms us from the inside out, that our minds are renewed and restored to see our Creator and to see Jesus, Him first, above everything else. That's the only way to turn the volume of the world down is to look into Scripture and turn the volume of God's Word up in our lives. If you will do this, in actuality, this is my prayer for you. In Psalm 25, verses 4 to 5, this is how I want to close today. This needs to be your heart. This needs to be what you cry out for. It says, show me your ways, the psalmist said. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. I love that last part. As you cry out to God, as you say to God, I want to make you my first priority. I look into your word. I look into your teaching. I look into your ways. God, reveal these to me. May they be just more than words and things that I read on a page. Make them life to me. As you do this, your hope in God can take you through each and every single day, all day long. And as we face so many difficult things in this world today, a lot of them I don't even believe will be solved in our lifetime. I know that there are things that you are maybe even be confronted with there in your own family. And you've prayed and you've turned it over to God and it still seems to be that the, the noise of that problem, the noise of that chaos or that fracture in relationship, the the noise of the problems is so much greater than God's word. I just say to you again, turn up the volume of God's word. Turn down the volume of the world. Turn down the volume of that problem long enough to give God some time to resurrect hope in your life. Now you've got to give him the material, the raw material of his word so that that can happen. But if you will do that, I just believe that hope can be present again for you. So I want to pray for you today, for each of you, that this would be your desire, that this would be your heart, to see Jesus and to know him for who he truly is. Maybe you need to renew your passion for that today. I want to pray for you. Maybe you just need hope to be made alive and fresh again. I'll pray for you as well. So if you're there and and maybe the, the, the heaviness of the problem is just so great. Maybe you just need to lift your hands so as to symbolize that you're taking your hands off the problem and you're lifting them and stretching your hands out toward God to receive all that he has for you. As I pray for you today, if you want to do that, just to lift your hands and receive all that God has for you, go ahead and do that right there. Father, I pray for every person listening to me today in the chaos and in the the sea of voices that may be surrounding us today. Father, we stretch our hands out to receive hope. May faith arise again as we look into your word. 
because faith comes by hearing your word. And Father, as we read it, as we listen to it, as we put it in our hearts and lives today, Father, I just believe that that faith will resurrect hope again in you, our God, as you teach us and guide us each and every single day. Father, that hope would carry us all day long. Father, I may not know the specifics of every situation, of every family, of every person, but I do know the answer, and that's Jesus. So, Father, I pray today that you would reveal Jesus to every longing heart, to every person who desires to know you, Father. May you reveal yourselves to them in such a mighty and profound way. If you're sitting there today and maybe you've never given your life to Jesus, maybe you've never opened your heart to God to come in and to transform you, to make you new from the inside out, just say these words with me. God, I come in faith. I believe that Jesus is your son who died for my sin, who took my place. I open my heart and my life. I give you everything. I put you first. And from this moment forward, not on someone's other opinion, but on what your word says, I am your child. And I'll follow you every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer today, I believe God did just that. I believe that he has changed you. And if you need some help getting started, go to familylifechurch.cc. Go to our prayer page. Let us know you prayed that prayer. And I'll reach out to you and I'll help you in your new journey as you begin to follow God and put him first. Listen, I love all of you. I may not know you. Maybe you were first time watching us today. All of our Family Life Church family. I love all of you. I care for you. My heart is for you. My passion is to, to help see you succeed and to see your life remain stable and not collapse. In any way that we can help you do that, we'll be glad to do it. We look forward to getting back together and being close together, hopefully very soon. But remember, July 5th, 5 p.m., July 5th at 5 p.m., we're going to be sending out some details about how we're going to gather for about an hour or so, have some music, just connect with one another and really have a great time as we begin to launch back into meeting with one another. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad that you did. I hope your life is better because of it. I'll see you next time.